Okay, Bridges here again, and this is Barbara again, demonstrating on my Singer 1591 that I converted to a 1588, and I also added a hand crank for her to use. Um, this is a machine that was made from three different machines that I bought over the course of several years uh, in Ponca City, uh, and... Uh, it works real nice. As you can see, she's making squares, as she described earlier, for the steam engine show coming up. The squares for the quilt we're making. At for the, the quilt engine. for the steam yeah. engine show, yeah. You nest, in, you nest in the seams, it's what it's called. I'm, a, I'm kind of a beginner quilter, Wes, but I've, I've learned quite a bit from the friends who have taught me. And this little, this little thing right here is called, oh, I just forgot. It's a, a thread saver. And so it's the handiest thing. You can take and stitch on it. You don't have to cut threads. The threads don't go down below where the bobbin is. And you can just start right in there and it saves thread. Thus, that's why it's called a thread saver. And that's this little piece of fabric right here? That's right. And then it just, you just clip it off when you finish that particular round. And the nesting of the seams is so that when I come to iron this, and I should be ironing these along the way, but I forgot my iron today. And so you just nest those in so that the seam is not so thick that you can't sew your sashing with the, and the rest of the sewing. If, if a person were to be able to do top stitching on all of this to perform the quilting method, you want you don't want different varying thicknesses. And if it goes to a professional quilter, they don't want thicker varying thicknesses. It's it's harder to uh, get things accomplished. They see. Okay, so then you just take clip this off. See, there's just not very much there that I'm wasting. You stick it back in there. And of course, this is a hand crank. You can do this with an electric machine as well. I happen to, my favorite machines, since Wes introduced me to the hand crank, are the hand cranks. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? A lot of people are skeptical when I tell them that somebody really likes the hand crank machines. Well, I like the hand crank because of the control. I can I can just sit here. I can start. The, I can do a chain underneath. It's not going to go down below and tangle around the bobbin. I I've sewn for well since oh what year were that since 1964. <laughs> so I've sewn a long time on electronics, but I really like the control. I, on the electronics, you know, you can push the pedal down and you can get it to go slow, but you can't get it to go as slow as you can with the hand crank um, without the motor just humming or buzzing or it sounds like it's um, hesitating. It gives you like that growl. And this, I'll show you on this sample. So, okay, I can start it and go real slow. Like if you're going around a corner, or you can go pretty fast with it. So I can just stop, lift this up, start again. Now you can do that on an electric machine. But say I wanted to get right to the very tip end of this fabric. I don't know if Wes can get that close. Right, right to the tip end of the fabric. I'll do that again. Right to the tip end of that fabric. And you know, you can see I'm doing the hand crank here. You can't really get an electronic machine to go that slow without it just going And then you have to use, use the wheel. So that's one of the reasons I really like the hand crank. Okay. Plus, plus I, I get to participate with history. And I enjoy that part. Well, Barbara, thank you very much for answering these questions.